I'm Head of Skills at the Mauritius Africa FinTech Hub, and I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon's webinar session uh, entitled Management Responsibilities in Information Security and Data Privacy. Thank you so much for joining us. As you may all be aware, today is International Data Privacy and Protection Day which was first initiated back in 2007. It started in Europe and has since spread across the whole world as an international effort to create awareness both for individuals and businesses about the importance of respecting privacy, safeguarding data and enabling trust. Today, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Vikash Lal Singh of Accentric Consulting to share his expert insights on understanding the threats and challenges in the space of data security and the management responsibilities faced in cybersecurity and data privacy. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Vikash. Um, Vikash Lal Singh is Director of Eccentrics Consulting Limited. He's a dynamic professional with over 20 years of experience spanned across offshore service delivery, ICT project management, IT governance, risk and compliance, information security, data privacy, data protection officer, and business continuity for global organizations. He has successfully led the ICO 27001 Information Security Management System and GDPR implementation, and has certification across multiple locations in Europe, Africa, and Mauritius. Welcome, Vikash, and thank you so much for coming today and joining us for this session. Thank you, Alison. Um, at this point, I'd like to hand over to Vikash, who will be uh, sharing his insights with you all. Uh, but before I do that, I'd just like to remind you all, we do encourage your questions to Vikash uh, during this session. You can submit a question uh, using the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So please do send us any questions you have relating to today's topic. Over to you, Vikash. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. All right, so welcome everyone uh, to this session. Uh, as Lisa has said, so I'm from Acentrix Consulting. Uh, we are in the information security landscape for quite some time now. So our main, I mean, main uh, activities, if I can give you a brief introduction, is that we implement uh, data privacy, information security, GDPR, uh, compliance with ISO 27001. And we also, uh, so we are based in Mauritius mainly, we have a presence in the UK. Uh, we've been working with clients uh, mostly across Europe and a few in Mauritius as well. And we've been uh, working with organizations that have around 800 plus FTEs. So all in all, I mean, uh, in, uh, on average, we have around 15 years experience in information security and data privacy. And so this is a little bit of our background uh, on, on us. So uh, today's session, so uh, what we're going to cover. So just to give you an, uh, a brief overview, uh, this session is part of a series which is in four, uh, four parts actually. And this is our, uh, let's say, uh, training that we provide normally to organizations. So today we have the pleasure to provide this free session uh, on part one, which is management responsibilities uh, through uh, uh, the platform that uh, MEFH has, has brought to us. And we are happy to collaborate with MEFH on, on, this, uh, on this data privacy day, or World Data Privacy Day, actually. So if you have any questions, be, please feel free to ask them uh, during uh, the session. And uh, if there's anything that I can respond immediately, we'll do so. Otherwise, we'll keep it at the end. Uh, the, for the Q&A. So let's see today's agenda. So we'll go through how, I mean, understanding the impact of security and privacy uh, breaches. So uh, how it impacts uh, organization. So major security threats and challenges. Uh, we'll go into how you would typically protect your data. And then we'll cover effectively management responsibilities when it comes to uh, data protection. Uh, data privacy and information security. So today's session is mostly geared towards people who are either at the management uh, level within the organization uh, so that they understand uh, the impact of information security and data, data privacy risk so that they can effectively protect the organizations or anyone, anyone who is a stakeholder in, in data privacy and information security within the organization and who can potentially advise uh, their management 
uh, into the implementation of the practices and to sensitize them uh, into uh, these, this area. So let's see what is the impact of security and privacy breaches. So, I mean, I don't know if anyone has any idea, just a question to the, to the attendees of what is the typical cost of a data breach? So maybe someone can use, I mean, can use a chat to, to write if uh, just one estimate. Anyone? No? Okay, let's see. So typically uh, data breaches uh, cost around 4.24 million USD. So if, if a company suffer a data breach, so that's about 4.2 uh, million USD, which is roughly 182 million rupees uh, when it translated to our local currency. And this has gone up uh, by approximately 10% compared to last year. And most of the data that is stolen is personal data. So we have around uh, the estimated cost is 180 USD per personal record that is lost. And the most, I mean, one of the most uh, incident type is business email compromise. So what we mean is that uh, business email accounts are compromised by external uh, hackers, and then they steal information or are able to perform fraudulent transaction on behalf of the uh, companies. 17% are typically uh, phishing attacks and up to there's up to 38% loss of business. So what we can see from the data, which is from IBM, uh, so uh, IBM and Podiman Institute that issued a report last year, late last year, about 30% of uh, companies that suffer data breaches are either in the financial, I mean, or in the financial services sector actually, and 16% are in the services sector. And uh, then we have also industry and technology. So most of the incidents that happen uh, are mostly in the financial services and technology sectors. So let's see in terms of how we come up to the cost uh, of 4.24 million. So whenever there's a security breach, uh, there's detection and escalation, which is a process where typically you would be able to identify that uh, there has been a breach within your system, there has been a data breach, and that would mean uh, all the activities that enable you to detect the breach and escalate it to the right uh, parties. So in, in a sense, sometimes this could involve internal teams, so that, that requires the effort. This, this could involve external teams, consultants, and, and also tools that you need to use to, for detection. So there's notification as well. So notification is when you would need to notify the stakeholders uh, the data subject. So when, when it comes to uh, personal data, so you have an obligation under the GDPR or, or even Data Protection Act of Mauritius, for instance, that you need to notify data subjects and you need to notify data protection regulators. So in our case, in Mauritius, that would be the Data Protection Commissioner and other third parties in case you're dealing with uh, suppliers or you have uh, processors that are processing your data. So you need, you need to advise them. So that is a cost center as well. There's also the loss of business. So activities uh, that are uh, used to minimize the loss of customers business and the business disruption that happens due to the data breach. So this uh, again is a cost to the organization and anything that goes after the breach response so activity that help you communicate the breach and also redress activities. So as I said, these are the four main cost centers, but not only uh, the ones where costs are involved following a data breach, but this is just to give you an idea. Uh, I have another question. Uh, I don't know, let me see if I can see the chat because I think, okay, great. And now I can see the chat screen. Yeah, so another question to the audience, maybe, maybe you can write in the chat again. How many days do you think it takes to identify and contain a breach? So approximately, let's say uh, you have a data breach, 
uh, how many days does it take for you as an organization to identify it uh, and then to, uh, to remediate it? Any ideas, anyone? Two weeks, let's see. Who else can give it a try? All right, okay. So we have only two weeks uh, as a uh, suggestion. Let's see. So the average time to identify and continue the average is measuring is in days on average is 212 days. So that's the global average. So from what you can see from this chart is that compromised credential is 250 days on average to detect the breach, to remediate it 91 days. So total is almost one year uh, to remediate uh, a breach situation. And the global average is 212 days uh, to detect. So 287, that's uh, the total time that you would take on average to detect a breach and to remediate it. That's, that's a lot actually, that's almost a year. And it goes uh, up from last year, I mean 2020, 2021, which was uh, 280, now it's 287. So what that means is that any one of us here we could have our organization suffering from a data breach and we wouldn't be aware of it until later this year, like Q4, somewhere in Q4, which is quite serious, right? So in most cases, uh, let's see what are the impact to organization. In most cases, so there's financial loss. So people are, when they attack an organization, when they commit a security incident, it's mostly for financial loss. So more than 50% are financially motivated. And the impact, so based on marketing experts, uh, the reputational impact is one of the most serious ones. So 71% of marketing experts agree that uh, the major impact of a data breach is the uh, reputational impact of the organization. And this causes up to 30% decrease in customer. So of course, there's loss of brand value as well. And we also have, so under the GDPR, if you suffer a data breach, there's fines and sanctions, which are 20 million euros or up to 4% annual turnover. So, so this is, these sanctions are based on the GDPR regulations. So depending on the severity of the breach and what action, uh, the company has taken to mitigate or minimize the, the breach uh, in case they don't abide to the regulations, so they are fined. As of yesterday, uh, the figures for total fines uh, that were issued by the European Union from uh, application of the legislation, which is 2018 until now, is over 1.5 billion euros, which is a lot. So organization faces a lot of consequence in case you uh, suffer a data breach. So let's see in terms of the fines. So the number of fines uh, went on drastically uh, late, I mean, last year, actually, it's from last year till, till, till this year. And most of the fines were around a non-compliance with uh, general data processing principles insufficient legal basis uh, for processing, uh, and then there are the other ones. So, I mean, these are just for, for your information so that have, you have an idea of the severity of the data breach worldwide. So my next question then, uh, what could be the most common cause of data breach? So we've talked about uh, how much time it takes, what is the impact of data breach? Uh, does anyone have an idea of what, what is the most common uh, cause of data breach? Anyone, please? Human error. Yes, that's true. So, I mean, most, most of the data breaches, let's say 44% uh, are, are deemed as not determined. But not determined is really because uh, it's either internal uh, or uh, negligent insider. So 34% are negligent insider. So what, what this tells us is that uh, most of your data breach would be eventually caused by your employees. So that would be by your own employees. So 
even though you could have uh, strong uh, tools, uh, strong security measures, technical measures, uh, the human, I mean, the human element is the weakest link when it comes to security, and, and we are most likely the cause of a security incident. So if we look at the most security threats, so it's employee because there's lack of awareness, there's negligence, so people are aware of the consequences and aware of the security practices, but they, they forget or they don't pay much attention during the business process. And there's malfeasance as well, where uh, deliberately someone causes a security incident, so, so that can happen. So based on insurance data from Willis Towers, so what we can say is that 66% of your security incidents would be eventually coming from your employees, while the other ones, the other 33% uh, or so, would be from uh, external factors. So that helps us understand that uh, we need to focus mainly on, on the employees, aside from the technical controls that you would typically put to secure your environment. So some external threats of course, malware, virus trojans and suppliers as well. So there could be hackers uh, working for your competitors and social engineering attacks, which is basically someone calling in uh, and then trying to steal information from you. So what are the typical challenges that organizations face. So, I mean, as an organization, organization we've seen that uh, you have uh, quite a number of risks that you face, but on top of the risk, there are some, uh, some challenges that can, uh, I mean, prevent you from implementing information security and data privacy, or things that you need to make sure that you, you abide to uh, during the implementation. So if we take the context of, of Mauritius, for instance, so in general, you would have your, your uh, information security data privacy requirements, the general requirements and general practices. You have GDPR, Audit Protection Act, in case you, you, you fall under uh, Mauritian jurisdictions only. Uh, if you're a financial services uh, company, so you would have the requirements of the FSC, so uh, the Cyber Security Risk and Governance uh, circular that was issued by the FSC for all management companies and, and uh, organizations within the financial sector. And there's also the data protection office uh, that typically uh, monitors all the data uh, privacy uh, issues and uh, incidents in Mauritius. So if we look at that, so the typical challenges is that we have operational loss, of course. So organizations may face extortion, financial loss and liabilities. Uh, when it comes to uh, security incident or even data breach, the liabilities in terms of they need to compensate uh, to individuals or to companies if they, uh, they've caused a breach of their data. Uh, there's also insurance that kicks in, of, of course, but that depends whether you're insured against cyber security and uh, insurance. There's data loss, so company data, personal data, so there could be uh, sensitive business data that is lost uh, due to the incident. Uh, we need, I mean, one of the, all, all the challenges is staff training. So we need to make sure that any staff is trained and are aware of the security practices. Uh, they need to, need to ensure that they need to adhere to security and data privacy practices. And there's a compliance. So we've talked about the financial FSC, GDPR and DPA compliance. And there's also a part which is continuous monitoring and improvement. So organization just, I mean, need not just include, I mean, in, uh, implement the security practices, but then needs to be continuous monitoring because as soon as you implement compliance, the next day you would see the compliance level starting to go down if you don't monitor and, and maintain a, a, a good level. So the, these are a bit of, uh, let's say, the main challenges for organization. And in terms of you as an organization, how would you protect your data? So there's, when, when we talk about data protection and, pri and privacy, so the areas that we need to look into is, do your employees trust you? So typically you would hold employee personal data and you would need to protect their data uh, as an organization. So that's your responsibility. So can your employees trust you in the sense that, uh, that you are keeping the data secure, that, you, that uh, intruders or outsiders don't have access to their personal data? 
Same applies for your customers. So you're dealing with customers, whether it's from Mauritius, Europe, or anywhere else. So whether GDPR applies, data protection applies, or, or in any other privacy regulation. So can your customers trust you while doing business with you that the data will be safe? If you're managing transactions for your customers, uh, the investment, uh, the portfolio, uh, would, would they be safe? I mean, would they be uh, confident in, in, in knowing that you're keeping the data safe for them and, and no outside is getting information on, on their activities? Can your suppliers trust you? So eventually when you deal with suppliers, you're holding supplier data, you're dealing with uh, personnel from, from the suppliers. So you have personal information from them as well. Is your business data secure? So typically you would have uh, confidential processors, you would have uh, proprietary information. So how secure are they within your premises or how are you keeping it uh, secure? Are your communications secure? Uh, nowadays, communications is a big part of security because uh, there's a lot of uh, privacy rights and privacy regulations that applies to communications as well. So you need to understand whether you have secure communication line and whether there's a risk of data breach while you're communicating information. And you need to understand who has access to your data. So as it stands, can you safely say you, you know exactly who has access to what data within your organization? And of course, can you confidently say that you're compliant with uh, the various regulations and requirements for, for data protection and information security? So all these uh, are the questions that you would typically need to ask yourself whether you feel that you're uh, adequately protecting data and implementing privacy within your organization. So that being said, so in terms of security level, so if we, if we talk about data privacy, about when we look into information security, so you need to make sure that your network is secure. So at network level, so that is the interconnection between all your devices and within your internal network, so going one, uh, one level up, so we need to look at the system. So the system that you deployed within your network, are they secured? We need to look at all the devices. So the devices connected on your uh, network, whether it's uh, uh, individual devices or through uh, internet, so are they secured on your network? And then last, we'll, we'll need to look at the global aspect, which is information security. So typically, if we want to deploy a security program within the organization, so uh, you would normally have uh, three core layers, which is secure and comply. So you would implement uh, controls and measures to protect all your assets. So that could be physically protecting your assets or digitally protecting your assets. So security is at two level. So, uh, and then complying with standards legislations and regulatory requirements, depending on the business sector that you have. So that would be one. Second would be to be able to detect any uh, incident. So implement vigilance and detect any incident and any and, uh, uh, security breach, data breach. Identify violation or external threats. So you need to monitor uh, any external threats and make sure that you're aware of what is happening out there. And of course, conduct training and awareness program for your internal uh, staff, for your team members. And then we have the improve and respond. Uh, so in general, the, these are the three layers, the three core layers, although you can go into more details in each one of them, but the core, the, the last one is improve and respond where you need to improve your business resilience and ensure that you have business continuity implemented and that you can uh, recover from an incident and improve your recovery time. So the, I mean, that's an overview of, of what we have in terms of, uh, I mean, what we need to have at, to the least for security and privacy program. Now let, let's see, so the, what we covered so far is uh, an overview of why you need information security and its privacy, what are the risks and challenges and, and how you can best implement uh, a framework in place. So now let's see in terms of what are the management responsibilities in cybersecurity and data privacy, because this is quite important because uh, often what we've, I mean, what we've come across is that teams tell us that, okay, they do, I mean, technical teams tell us, they do understand 
the risk, the challenges, and the impact. But uh, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to convince the management in terms of, of what they need to do and to get the, the buy-in and the support sometimes. So that's why, uh, I mean, this area, I mean, this part is focused mainly on what, are, what is management for responsibilities, because uh, the, the, there is a responsibility, of course, and how you as, a, as, as someone in the management team can, can start uh, looking into it, uh, like in terms of implementing your security program, or as I said, if you're someone uh, who is working in the technical implementation or in the business, and you would like to sensitize your management, so you can use these as, as a guidance. So question then, what do you think is a key role of management in a security and, and privacy program? So anyone has any idea? Can you please suggest? Management is what, how would you complete that phrase? Enforce policy, what else? Anyone else has any idea? So what, what do you think is the key role of management when it comes to security and privacy? Treat it as top priority, yes. Let's see, that, that's part of it. So let's say management is accountable. So if ever you go to a management meeting and your, your manager or your senior management ask you, it's your role to, to implement security and privacy, you can say yes, but ultimately management is accountable. So what this means is that if there's a data breach, it's your CEO or your MD that needs to deal with the local authorities. So they need to uh, deal with the data protection office. They would need to deal with the customers. They would need to deal with uh, the stakeholders. So that's that's uh, why it is important for them to understand that, I mean, for you as well to understand if you're in the management team, that uh, management is accountable. So, from the accountability now goes the responsibility. So who is responsible then for information security? <clears throat> so management is, is responsible to implement, I mean, to appoint a CISO, so a chief information security officer. So typically that would be someone who managed the information security and data privacy program uh, to make sure that you implement, uh, and, and uh, I mean, all the controls, all the processes in place within the organization. So. Some organizations, I mean, big organizations, they can afford to have their own CISO, but small to medium organizations, what they would typically do is uh, typically outsource this, uh, this service to uh, an external provider. We do have some clients who, who uh, request us to be the CISO as well. So, so this is one of uh, the areas that we look into. So, and then there's a DPO, so Data Protection Officer. So under GDPR and under the Data Protection Act of Mauritius as well. So you need to have a Data Protection Officer. So that will be the person looking after all your uh, data protection processes, data privacy uh, processes, and ensuring that you have data privacy in place, uh, reporting data breaches uh, to the authorities, uh, and, and ensuring that remedial actions are taken as well. And, uh, notifying client in case of the data is uh, is compromised. So, I mean, these are the mostly the responsibility of the data protection officer, but as we said, management is accountable for all the communications in, in the sense that communication needs to go through them, actually. So one of the key aspects, I mean, when it comes to security and privacy from the management team, the top management, is to make sure that you have a vision, mission, and strategy. So of course, all, all organizations would have their own business strategy, but when it comes to security and privacy, many do not have a, a vision, mission, and strategy in place. So that would be, uh, what is your public statement on information security and data privacy? What is the commitment that you're giving to your customers, employees, business partners, and suppliers when it comes to securing your data and securing their data? So whether it's business data or personal data. So once you define your public statement, that's your commitment towards uh, your stakeholders. And from that is, uh, you need to ensure that you have your vision and mission. So openness and transparency is always key uh, when it comes to security and privacy. So you need to uh, define uh, your public statement and make sure that uh, you, you're transparent on the, 
into the, I mean, the processor that you have in place to secure data. And you need to make sure that you have a strategy when it comes to security and privacy. So a strategy, which means that in terms of the data lifecycle management, so whether you're collecting data, so do you provide privacy notice? Uh, do you uh, obtain consent, for instance, uh, when it comes to usage and processing? So do you have a confidentiality agreement? Uh, do you have uh, employment contracts updated? Uh, and then when you're storing data, so where are you storing it? Do you have the security measures in place? And when you're transferring to third party, so uh, in case you have a processor, uh, are you transferring it in a secure manner and are you dis uh, uh, disposing the data as well in a secure manner when it co comes to its lifetime? So you need to define your strategy at organization level and ensure that you have an internal strategy in terms of managing security and privacy. So one of the key challenges uh, that technical teams, I mean, cybersecurity or, or data protection teams have when implementing a data privacy and security program. So let's see some of them. So 66% of organizations say that they have a shared budget with IT. So. Uh, Security and privacy budget is not dedicated, so it's shared under the IT budget. We have around 19% that has still have a shared budget, but line items specifically for privacy and security when it comes to budgeting on a yearly basis. And we have only 6% of organizations in, in, on average that have a dedicated budget for privacy and security. So this tells us that many organizations do not give enough importance to security and privacy. And this is uh, an area, of, I mean, this is a risk area, of course. In terms of uh, support for management, so more than 50% uh, of organizations say they lack uh, budget. So they lack budget from, uh, from management. They have inadequate staffing, so they lack the right staff, the right team to implement security and, and privacy. And approximately 28% say they lack support from the business. So uh, that's uh, the business providing support when it comes to security measures, when it comes to uh, security practices. So what we've seen in, in the last quarter of 2021, 2022, so more than 50% of businesses have increased their information security and its privacy budget uh, for this year, 2022. So uh, around 32% are increasing by 5% or more and 29% by less than 5%. So half of, of organizations out there, they are aware of the risk and the impact of security to their organizations. So they are investing and they are increasing the budget to make sure uh, they implement the right controls and the right processes. While we have approximately 50% who, who are staying the same. So, uh, I mean, this could be a good thing in the sense that if they have already implemented the controls and they, they know they are safe, they've been audited externally, and they know that they have a good level of compliance, that's fine. But it is, it is like a red alert in case you do not have the comfort that you, you're uh, procedures, your processes, and your controls are, are secure enough for your organization. So now we've, seen, I mean, we've seen that obviously organizations uh, need budget. So that's one of the key management responsibilities to provide the right budget. But where would the budget go? So if you were to convince management to uh, to provide the budget for security and privacy, so where would you ask them to allocate the budget? So what we've seen is uh, from the figures from Statista. 2021, so Q4 last year, 23%, so almost one quarter of your budget when it comes to security would go on skill staff. So that would mean uh, hiring the right person or high appointing the right uh, partner when it comes to security and, and privacy to make sure that you have expertise internally and, and, and advice as well. And around 19% is on-premise infrastructure. So that would mean ensuring that you have security uh, hardware, so your, your uh, infrastructure is secure. And around 17% is on premise tools. So that would be software that enables you to in implement security. 
And of course, there's about 12% for cloud-based solutions and then the other areas. So cloud-based is, is, is uh, relatively low compared to uh, on-premise because on-premise you need to implement your own security control, security practices, while on cloud, many other cloud service providers, they already have quite a good level of security uh, implemented. So what is, I mean, we've seen that management needs to uh, have the strategy in place, they need to have the focus, appoint the right uh, people, they need to have uh, provide the budget. So next is supporting the program. So what that means is that management needs to be the sponsor of the program, of the security program and data privacy program. So they need to, to lead by example, as we often say, they need to support the initiative. So all initiatives when it comes to security and privacy, so whether you're implementing a good practices or you're implementing uh, business changes, sometimes what can happen is that uh, there's resistance from the business, but uh, management, top management needs to support these initiatives and ensure that it's adopted by the business. Uh, they need to typically champion training and awareness. So they need to be the first one to get trained and encourage the business as well to, to get their people trained. They need to be continuous reviews and monitoring. So we need to make sure that uh, implementing a security program is not just a, a one-off uh, activity. There needs to be continuous reviews. So management needs to be aware of what is happening, have cold quarterly reviews uh, with the teams and ensure that they are maintaining the, the compliance level. You need to hold employees accountable. So uh, you cannot roll out a security program unless you have everyone accountable on, within their uh, role and within the organization. And need to ensure that incidents are monitored and, and are managed adequately. And one of the areas that uh, where management needs to support the program is to ensure that there's external validation. So if you're an organization with, which is uh, where security is quite important, you need to get uh, the organization validated. I mean, the program validated externally by a service provider. So that means having uh, certifications uh, in, in case you, you, there's a need for it in your business. Certification like, like ISO 27001, which is the information security management system uh, compliance. You need to have independent reviews. So you could not go for certification, but at least you could uh, have uh, independent audit being run on top of your program just to assess the efficacy. I mean, how, how good your program has been implemented. And also if there's any gaps uh, with regards to the program and with regards to the law, I mean, the requirements of legislation. So, so that would make sure that you have a full, I mean, full support from management and management is fully supportive of the program. Uh, the, we, we talk about uh, one area is the independent reviews, so uh, external audit. So one of the key area, I mean, key, let's say that's main importance why it, it is good to have uh, external audit is that Sometimes internal teams, so what we've seen in, in our practice is that internal teams may be in a good picture to management, but reality might be different. So you do have security controls, you do have security measures, data privacy measures, but internal teams, they don't really uh, disclose everything that's happening. And, and that's one of the uh, areas that you want to uncover as management. Sometimes IT administrators, so whether you have an internal IT administrator or external one, so they may have access to more data than they're supposed to. So often what we want when, you, when we ask uh, uh, clients, so who has access to, to their data, they would say IT administrator, but to what level do they need to have these, uh, these access? Do they, do they need to have access to all the data? So this is something that uh, we normally check when we do the reviews. Service providers often have access to more information and personal data than they legally should. So in case you're, you're, you have service providers that are intervening within your uh, office space or your outsourcing processes to, uh, to suppliers, sometimes they may have access that is not required. They may have access to data and they could be the one causing a data breach. Investments may not be used as initially intended. So we've seen this uh, many times whereby uh, organizations, they do have 
they do implement controls. They, they have invested into uh, infrastructure, into tools, into software. But then at some point, for some reason, these are not being used effectively or they're just being popped and, and not really in use. So it's just that you, the investment is not being exploited uh, as it should be. And you may not have, I mean, what we've seen is that you may not have the qualified resources or experienced resources to, to implement your security program and enterprise program. And independent reviews would typically highlight any risks that are not visible to internal users. And also, uh, they may not, I mean, your internal teams may not be up to date with new threats, practices, or, or new standards. So that's, I mean, in, uh, in a nutshell, why there's a need for independent audit and reviews, uh, which would typically uh, be a, a team reporting directly to senior management and giving them the uh, actual uh, picture of, of how it's, what's happening within, within the organization when it comes to security and privacy. So in, in summary, so what we've seen is that uh, Security and privacy is not just compliance. So it is about building trust. So you need to build, build trust between uh, within your business or within uh, your organization itself. Uh, you need to build trust with all your stakeholders. So they need to trust that they are doing business with a secure organization, with an organization that has security and privacy within uh, all their business practices. You need to have a strategy in place. So we've seen that it's good to have a business, uh, overall business strategy for your organization, but it's something else to have a strategy when it comes to security and privacy. So you need to make sure that you have your mission and vision statement and your strategy in place on how you would manage data and secure your data. And you need to have the right budget. So the right level of budget for security and privacy. So we often uh, have the thinking that uh, when it comes to budgeting, we do more with less, uh, which means that typically we try to do the maximum we can with the least amount of resources and teams. This is not typically true when it comes to security and privacy. Doing more with less doesn't work. So you need to do the, you need to have the right resources and the right uh, budget when it comes to security and privacy to make sure that you don't face any risk. So that would mean hiring uh, the right uh, resources as well and ensuring that you have uh, the right partners. There's also support. So we've seen that one of the core responsibilities of management is to make sure that they support the program. So they need to be fully aware of what's happening. They need to be connected with the implementation team and have regular reviews with them. And they need to make sure that they champion the initiatives so that they lead by example. This would eventually create a culture of security and privacy within an organization. And we've also talked about uh, external review. So there's a need to assess your program. So having a program in place and ensuring that it's there is not sufficient. So you need to have regularly assess it to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of uh, going I mean, going down on compliance level, and then uh, it's, it becomes uh, difficult to, to implement the program again. So this is, uh, in summary, what we've covered today. I don't know if there's any questions. So we've reached the Q&A session. So we have a question, does the support section talk about uh, legislation? So uh, I would assume that you mean, uh, ensuring that there's compliance with uh, legislation, so support. So typically, if you had, have a compliance team uh, or you have a legal team who monitors the legislations applicable to the business, so they would typically advise management. And, and uh, yes, I mean, management would need to make sure that they are aware of, of the program and the initiatives. Uh, we talk about continuous reviews and monitoring. So monitoring is not just monitoring of your program, but also monitoring of the legislations that are applicable to your business. So you might have regional laws, you might have sectoral laws, depending on the service sector that you, you, are, you are in. So there might be specific laws to your organization. So yes, the monitoring part uh, would, be, uh, would involve the legislations as well. Um, while people are thinking there, maybe I can ask you a very general question. Um, 
How has the pandemic influenced this scene? Have you seen a, an, an update, an uptick in data security? Is it is it causing budgetary challenges? How how, how has it influenced things? Yeah. So with the pandemic uh, since 2020, what we've seen is that uh, security incidents have uh, increased. So the number of incidents have increased. Uh, that's mainly because when people were working at the office, the infrastructure at the office was, a bit, let's say, more secure and uh, uh, people were most of the time using uh, company assets. So when working remotely, people are working on their own Wi-Fi, which might have not, I mean, might, might not have security level. Uh, they are more prone to attacks because they might be using uh, devices that are personal or they might be using, uh, I mean, uh, tools or the, I mean the PC for personal use as well. So we've seen a, a, a growth in the number of security incidents actually uh, with the pandemic and lots of organizations while uh, working remotely has been good to some extent for them. So they are they they unfortunately have suffered data breaches and the the focus for this year as we've seen in terms of investment, many organizations are trying to increase the investment to cater for localized tools or controls that might be able to secure devices uh, remotely. So even though uh, organizations or I mean, uh, people are using the, the device at home, so the deploying solutions that enable a remote uh, wipeout or devices, for instance, so quite, quite a number of solutions we're investing into. Do we have any security breach reports or statistics for security breaches in Mauritius specifically? Yeah, so, so we do have ones that dated back to 2020. I'm not sure if the 2021 had been issued, but uh, I mean, I don't have the details right now because the, the data is not, uh, I mean, has been, uh, it's been a long time since 2020 actually. So that's why we didn't share the data, but yes, I mean, there's quite a number of breaches in Mauritius. Most of them don't go reported, so it's not reported, but uh, there's quite a number of breaches and quite a number of loss as well. So we're still waiting for the figures for 2021. Uh, we'll try to get hold of that and potentially share it in our next sessions or uh, I mean, ultimately. But yeah, uh, we don't have the exact details at the moment, but uh, we did have the figures for 2020, which I don't have with me, unfortunately, right now. So with that, I'd like to say thank you so much uh, to Vikash and the Eccentrics consulting team for uh, generously offering their time and insights today. I hope that you as an audience have found the session today informative. Um, and uh, if you have any further questions uh, for Vikash, uh, as I said, you will be uh, able to contact him directly. Just look out for that email coming into your inbox in the next few days as a follow up. So thank you, Vikash. Thank you to everyone you. for uh, attending today. And we look forward to welcoming you to a future uh, event public events and uh, for those of you who are members of the Mauritius Africa FinTech Hub, uh, a range of uh, member only workshops, we look forward to welcoming you though to those uh, in the future. And do please uh, subscribe to MAPS mailing list if you don't already to hear about those. So thank you so much and good afternoon. Thank you.